What's up my know-it-alls? Well, it is definitely that time again, which means it is Wednesday morning, and that means Mandalorian time, baby. So here we go. Hopefully you've been keeping up and watching, because I'll tell you what, if you haven't, I'm going to spoil this whole thing. So uh, yeah, man, let's get into it. <laughs> Man, I tell you what, I loved this episode. Now, I know sometimes a lot of folks are like, well, you love everything, Mr. Know-it-all. No, but come on, guys. At the end of the day, I come from these at these things uh, from a very positive standpoint. Because my feeling is, look, I can be a critic, but at the same time, I'm a fan first. So we're just going to geek out and have some fun, aren't we? One of the things that I really appreciate is, before anything else is you guys clicking on this video. So thank you very much. I wanna take the opportunity and, and say thank you. Uh, as much as the channel grows, it's really all because of you guys. So check me out on all the different social medias that exist out there. Uh, we're on Instagram. We're definitely on TikTok. I'm also on, <laughs> funny enough, I'm on this new thing called Lemonade. I have no idea what that is. Who knows? You know what I'm saying? You just gotta get on social media and you're like, maybe someone will like the thing that I do. Whatever. All right, so, but back to this episode. So finally, episode five, we find ourselves moving into a direction that is much more in line with where I kind of felt we were gonna be at the beginning. So this is one of those times where you don't know you want something until you get it. So now with this episode, I wish this had been episode three and that we had kind of moved or, or we had kind of scooted a lot of the things that were going on in the beginning early on a little further forward or possibly even sort of tightened up some things. Cause we have, we've, we've literally had three 30 minute episodes. One of them was 28 minutes before before the credits. So, um, but anyway, all right, let's get into it. The episode starts with Gory and Shard, our good old, uh, the way uh, Mrs. Know-It-All had said it once before, looking like Mr. Seaweed over here. He is out for blood. He goes back to Navarro and approaches, I'm sorry, confronts Grief Karga. It's really funny because when they're talking, there's this moment where Grief Karga is literally saying to him, uh, hey man, uh, you know, I didn't, these guys here, they sh Vayne Vane shot first. And I was like, <laughs> Star Wars, you know, it's, it's, it's great. And uh, so then what does he do? Uh, when Grief Karga says, hey man, we can talk this all out, this and that, because he, because the droid actually asks, do you want me to start negotiations? And Karga's like, no, we're not, we're not going to set a precedent of doing that. He's dedicated to being the high magistrate, whatever, but he's dedicated to really kind of seeing Navarro not, uh, one, stay independent. And so he ends up having to do the one thing that he really regrets or wishes he didn't have to do, which is he has to call in for help. So what does he do? He calls the Adelphi Rangers. Remember those guys? That's right. So Blue Leader, or Blue, is the, as they call him, uh, is uh, is the guy who he reaches, and what does he do? He has a quick little conversation with him, and he basically says, hey man, I need your help. Uh, you always said if I could uh, if uh, if I could help. And so what is, and literally, well, and it's like this weird ranger, like drinking outpost station or whatever, this like bar that they all hang out at, or whatever, kind of like the PX for aliens. Uh, or in a galaxy far, far away. And so what he does is he says, well, because his partner said, look, man, uh, they're going to, I can't imagine they're going to want to do anything, this and that. And he says, well, maybe they can't exactly ignore me if I'm there. So what does he do? Heads back to Coruscant. So we get a cameo that I was not exactly expecting, which was Tim Meadows. Uh, he plays this sort of a, um, a uh, he plays a clerk. As he gets there, he's like, look, man, there's this thing going on. And the guy says to him, uh, I don't, where, what are you looking for? And out in the hallway, who do we see? Elias Kane. So now that carryover episode, that bridge episode from a few days, from a few weeks ago, rather, uh, it starts to make a little more sense. In that Elias Kane is definitely being, she's placed there. One, I thought she was just a zealot who had been converted. I was wrong. Mrs. Know-It-All was right. Mrs. Know-It-All said after the episode, she goes, she's dirty. And I was like, really? She goes, yeah. She thinks she's there for uh, for Moff Gideon, who we find out, who we found out last week, by the way, had never arrived at his trial. Okay? So keep that in mind. Or not last week, week before. Had never arrived at his trial and hasn't been seen from since. Um, by the way, we're going to circle back to that piece of information shortly. So what happens? Uh, the, the, uh, this, <laughs> Tim Meadows, denies his request because the pilot chick, you know, I'm sorry, communications chick, Elias Kane, who was super dirty, 
to our boy, uh, Dr. Pershing, she basically steps up and she's like, oh, I'm sorry, Navarro was, I couldn't help it over here. Navarro is a, um, that's, mm, they're not in, they haven't signed into charter for the New Republic. They're an independent, and which immediately puts the clerk on like, uh, see, that's a problem because we, I mean, we barely have the resources to help the people that who are our protectorate worlds. So we, uh, we really don't have, we can't, you know, it's just a tiny place in the outer room, whatever. So, <laughs> dude, uh, he come to find out, Blue believes firmly that the entire, that, that the empire is rising again. And he, obviously we don't know how prescient it is. And at some point you had to expect they were going to begin the trek toward, or the, the march, if you will, toward figuring out how to get us, loop us around to the sequel trilogy. Because at some point or another, we're gonna get the vestiges or the beginnings of the new, the new order. So what does he do? He goes, he apparently used to serve with someone who's at the culvert. It's the covert rather. And he goes and he finds them. And when he arrives, they're very much like, oh, well, I guess we're gonna have to kill him. <laughs> he knows where we are. Uh, and the Mandalorian comes out and he's like, uh, what's going on? And he says, uh, you know, I, I just came to tell you, your buddy is, your buddy's in trouble. And and literally Paz Viz is like, uh, he's seen us, we can kill him, it's this, whatever. And he's like, no, you got, I, he helped me once, I gotta let him go. And so there's this whole encounter where dude's basically there to say, listen, y'all gotta help. What do we think was happening? What do we think they were setting up for us last week? When you have all, when you have like literally that shot of all the Mandalorians along the coastline working out and practicing and getting better and honing their skills and stuff. Oh yeah, all that was for a reason. And the entire mission with the whole captured dinosaur egg thing, okay, with the uh, pterosaur. So like all of that was designed to show us that they're ready for bigger things. They answer the call because Paz Vizsla in the middle of Din Djarin, kind of beseeching everyone, because he knows he, he can't. He has, no, he has no right to just say let's go. And then Paz Vizsla gets up, and and I'm and I'm thinking, oh Paz Vizsla, you're gonna be a jerk, aren't you? And he proceeds to list all the reasons why. What he like, we died and this man and blah blah blah. And then he goes, but then and he's and like twists it quick on him and is like. Din Djarin didn't carry. He 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 fought, risked his life to fight and protect my son. Uh, Bo Katan was was strong, and she did not give up, and she's upheld her honor. This and that. Oh, he's just he's like I'm going because hey man, let's go. Because Man Mando's basically outlining. They've offered me a, a stretch of tract of land. What if we didn't have to run anymore? What if we had a place we could call home finally? Okay, and that's and that's how they do, and that's what they do. So the pirates are all chilling because by the way, they bombed Navarro. Right. Sorry, my ADD is running wild. Um, and yeah, it uh, it was, it's, you know, it's one of those things that when you see it happen, you're like, how did places survive? Like not being just blasted into glass. And then you get things like, and now, now Mandalore doesn't seem so strange because the pirates using, he's using a, a, a one of their, well, he's using a former Imperial ship. So anyway. All right, so they go, they fight back, and they take back Mandalore, and sure enough, or not Mandalore, ha! They take back Navarro, and sure enough, the the ship comes down, they they bring it down. It's, it's, a, it's a wonderfully well choreographed setup. You get the Mandalorians who are coming down, and they're taking out the pirates that are actually in the street, uh, and at some point or another, you see Karga and what, what people he has all drawing weapons, because they're coming back, so they corner the few the pirates that are left. Meanwhile, dude uh, Bo-Katan and Din Djarin take out the giant starship, that's floating in the atmosphere. That's the one thing I've never, I've never understood about the the science of Star Wars. But uh, whatever. I, and that's literally me just being nitpicky. Me as normally I'm a Star Trek fan, but whatever. No. Um. Yeah. So I genuinely felt like this was an excellent opening to more things. So they've really set up. A whole bunch of stuff, but then we get a button at the end of the episode. So they liberate, and, pa and uh, before I say any more, uh, and and that's exactly what Grief Cargo does. He gives, he says, from this stretch to that stretch, you may not have a home planet, but now you got a home. And it was so very poignant. And that's when the armor asks to talk to Bo-Katan. Bo-Katan comes in, and you see the armor, and she says to her, she says, uh, "Remove your helmet." And Bo-Katan's like, "What?" And she's like. I said, remove your helmet. And Bogotan's like, okay. 
And she says, do you respect my station? Yeah. Well, then take the helmet off, girl. And sure enough, she does. So Bo-Katan takes off her helmet and she says to her, she says, you, the armorer says to Bo-Katan, you can bridge both worlds. You can help others find the way. We all must walk the way together. I think on one level, the armor is talking about the way, the way we know it, like their, 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 their classic phrasing that we've known for three seasons. But I also think, I th and more importantly, I think she's trying to say the way is us together. So she's outlining, yes, this is the way, the way I've always said it, but that way is gonna take them to someplace new. And, and, and I believe that. I believe that 100%. I think we're gonna end up getting a more a unif a, she, she wants Bo-Katan to lead them. And, I'm, and I'm, I'm down. I think it's great. And so that's what she does. So they all walk out together. She's got no helmet on. And, and, and the armor explains. She's like, we're, are, we have to come together. All tribes. We're not gonna change who we are other than we're going to learn to live with others like ourselves. So that you know, so you'll have a society of Mandalorians. Some take their helmet off, some don't. But both respect each other and both come together because it is time, she says, to retake Mandalore. Okay. Then we come, we cut to a button. The button on the episode is um, a Delta Ranger Blue on the way back encounters a wrecked Lambda Clash transport shuttle. It's a former uh, Imperial ship turned, converted into a New Republic prison transport, the prison transport that matches the same flight logs as the one that was gonna take Moff Gideon to trial. And Moff Gideon never showed up at trial, so we know he escaped. Bam. Yeah, man. And then they find the most damning piece of evidence, shards of Beskar armor. So the implication seems to be and the guy says it, he's like, so Moff Gideon was taken by Mandalorians? And dude's like, oh, it would seem that way. Oh yeah, it's so good. Anyway, so there you go, now you know. And if knowing is half the battle, you're halfway to being a know-it-all yourself. So what's the know-it-all index for this episode for me? Uh, I'm gonna give this, this was a, I liked it. I liked it a lot, man. I liked it a lot. Um, we're gonna go a solid eight and a half. I'm gonna go eight and a half. Uh, I think it was worth, I think it's worth the watch. I think they, the, the story beats they move forward. I would have liked to have gotten this episode sooner, but I'm down. I'm down, I'm enjoying where they're going. I feel like it's much more flowing towards something. And I think that you're gonna get this Mandalorian building up of their culture back, or at least the beginnings of that. Um, I don't really know where the Mandalorians are in uh, in the sequel trilogy. We don't, they don't really address that much, so we may end up leading up to or some point of, or they're going in that direction. But we'll have an idea. So, all right, guys, comment below. Let me know what you guys thought. I really appreciate you joining me today. We'll talk soon again. Never forget, everyone loves a know-it-all.